Welcome to a new section – Threads and Logs. Threads and Thread Lifecycle. We will start the video with a demo of a thread lifecycle. After that, we will learn what a thread is and compare it to a process. Up to this point, we didn't have a need to work with threads directly, but they were still there. Now is the time to take an in-depth look at the most fundamental abstraction in concurrency – a thread. In this demo, we will be exploring different states of a thread. Every Java program has at least one thread, the main thread. Let's see what state it is in. Runnable state means that the thread is executing in the JVM. OK, it was easier. Let's create a new thread and follow its lifecycle. We have a thread which prints out hi there. Let's log its status right after creation and after starting it. Now, how to see its state when it has completed? We can pause the execution of the current thread, the main thread, like here. I think one second should be enough for the second thread to finish its execution. By the way, during the sleep, the thread is in the timed waiting state. But a better way would be to join the second thread with the main thread. The join waits for the second thread to finish. Let's see. Right after creation, the thread is in the new state. When it started its execution, it's in the runnable state, just like the main thread. And on completion, it's in the terminated state. What's the difference between a process and a thread? In Java. This is a very popular job interview question. It's popular because many people confuse the two. A process is an instance of a running program that is isolated from other processes on the same machine. Being isolated also means that normally processes share no memory between them. Every Java program runs in a process, one program per process, one process per program. As you saw in the demo, Every process has at least one thread. A thread means a thread of execution in a program. A single process can have several threads. It's easy to create a thread. We've just created a second thread in the demo. In this section, we will be working with several threads running within the same process, the same program. And the threads share all the memory in the process. They share the heap space. Anytime one thread modifies data, other threads can see it. Shared memory opens new possibilities, but also creates new challenges. A big part of this section will be about several threads sharing data. Another part will be about order in which operations of different threads are executed. Well, this order is unpredictable and non-deterministic. Oftentimes, there are more threads than CPUs. Therefore, the threads must share a CPU with other threads and the CPU needs to switch between different threads to simulate concurrency. The switching is called time slicing. On most operating systems, it happens unpredictably and non-deterministically. Because of it, the result may vary from execution to execution in the following videos of this section, and you may get different results too. We just saw how a thread's state changes during its life cycle. A newly created thread, which has not started yet, is in the new state. Once it started its execution, it transitions into the runnable state. A thread which has completed its execution is in the terminated state. We saw all of these states in the demo. A thread may be blocked, blocked waiting for a monitor log. We will see monitor logs in action in video 2 of this section, structured logs and synchronized keyword. A thread can be waiting waiting indefinitely for another thread to perform a particular action. We will make a thread wait in video 4 of this section, wait and notify. 
The timed waiting state means the thread is waiting for another thread to perform an action for up to a specified waiting time.